The following is a production of Columbus McKinnon Corporation. We really don't know who coined the expression, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Whoever it was, that person couldn't have said it better. During this program, we will present the proper care, use, and inspection procedures that will enable you to find that weak link and help prevent unsafe operating conditions in your plant. The need to comply with the legal requirements of the Occupational Safety and Health Act now makes an in-plant chain inspection program more important than ever. The simple but thorough inspection procedures recommended in this program for sling, chain, and attachment will, together with adequate records, ensure that reliable components are being used and provide documentary evidence of that fact to visiting OSHA inspectors. Let's begin by listing the conditions that will cause a chain to fail. The inspector should look for wear, nicks and gouges, localized bending, shearing, and stretch. With only these few items to detect, the job is really very simple. Wear can occur in any portion of a link that is subject to rubbing contact with another surface. A quick look at a strand of chain reveals that the natural shape of the link confines wear to only two areas. These critical areas are at the bearing point of interlink contact and on the outside of the straight side barrel. Side barrel wear is usually a result of the chain being dragged along hard surfaces or out from under load. Interlink wear can easily be detected by collapsing the chain to separate each link from its neighbors. Once wear has been observed, the question arises as to whether the amount is tolerable. This question can be resolved quickly by making a caliper measurement across the worn section and comparing this with the minimum allowable dimension. Tables giving minimum section dimensions or wear allowances for their products are published by all major chain manufacturers. Nicks and gouges in most cases occur on the straight barrels rather than on the ends. Since they are usually located in surfaces under compressive stress, their potentially harmful effects are reduced. At this time, we should note that the unique geometry of a chain link tends to protect tensile stress areas against damage from external causes. These tensile stress areas are on the outside of the link body at the link ends, where they are shielded against most damage by the presence of interconnected links. Tensile stress areas are also located on the insides of the straight barrels, but these surfaces are sheltered by their location. Gouges are stress concentration factors. Deep gouges can be harmful, especially if they happen to be located in the areas of tensile stress, and particularly if they are perpendicular to the direction of stress. The location of nicks and gouges will dictate their seriousness. It is suggested, however, that all nicks and gouges be filed or ground out. A stretched chain link can occur from overloading. This condition results in the scrapping of more chain than all other causes combined. Stretching, therefore, deserves the careful consideration of safety personnel and chain inspectors. Alloy steel sling chain typically exhibits well over 15% elongation before failure. The combination of generous elongation and high strength provide more than adequate energy absorption capacity to withstand safely the effects of normal shock loading. It should be noted that high elongation by itself is not an adequate indicator of shock resistance or general chain quality. Elongation should not be relied upon by riggers to provide advance warning of serious overloading and impending failure. A stretch chain proves overloading. Various formulas have been established to give the maximum allowable stretch before a chain is considered unsafe. 
This is sometimes given in terms of an allowable percentage increase in length. In many instances, it is possible, and often a fact, that just a small portion of a chain is stretched. When considered by overall length, the percentage of stretch may well be within the allowable limit, but individual lengths may be dangerously elongated. A visual link-by-link -link inspection is the best way to detect dangerously stretched lengths. Any amount of stretch reveals dangerous overloading, and the chain should be removed from service. Localized bending and shearing result from the chain length bearing against sharp corners. Stress concentration factors due to bearing against sharp corners make it advisable to subject chains in such service to more frequent inspection. Improper rigging will result in the premature wear of chain slings. Twists, knots, or kinks in chain cause stresses which may result in failure of the chain even at some later date when a comparatively light load may be suspended with a proper hitch. At this time, we feel it is important to list a few fundamental do's and don'ts that should be adhered to in the proper use of chain slings. Before lifting, be sure that each branch of the chain is free from twists. Do not tie the branches of the chain slings in a knot in order to shorten the reach. If the application calls for shortening, there are available special chain slings already equipped with chain shorteners. Be sure that each branch of the sling is free from kinks, which will cause unusual stresses on individual links. Avoid damaging impact loads caused by sudden jerking when lifting or lowering. When using sling hooks and grab hooks, be sure that the hook is engaged properly and not point loaded. If it is necessary to point load, there are specially designed hooks for this purpose. Avoid unbalanced load. When more than one chain sling is being used, make sure that the load is as evenly distributed as possible. Also check to see that the slings being used are properly rated to compensate for an uneven distribution of weight. To avoid damage to the chain length, Never crush the chain when lowering loads. When wrapping chain around a load with sharp corners, pads should be used. Be sure to consider the angle of inclination of sling branches. Charts are available showing working load limits at specified angles of inclination. We at CM Chain believe that if you follow the guidelines we just covered, your chain slings will last longer. Let's take a look at what might happen if your chain slings are improperly used. This is a sample of chain which was used regularly as a sling which was wrapped around sharp corners. A qualified chain inspector could readily see that the chain links which regularly came in contact with the corners were subjected to high stresses. A closer look of the left-hand corner shows us that one link in particular is badly deformed and twisted. In the right-hand corner of the sling assembly, we see that one of the links has been broken through the stock. Stress concentration factors due to bearing against sharp corners make it advisable to inspect chains in such service more frequently. End fittings such as sling or grab hooks are exposed to many kinds of damage and they too must be inspected. Among the things to look for are bending at right angles to the plane of the hook, wide throat openings, wear at the bearing points, and nicks and gouges. Bending at right angles to the plane of the hook is a sure sign of overstress on the hook. Indications such as this suggest that other sling components may have been overstressed. You should therefore concentrate your inspection on the balance of the sling assembly for additional damage. A hook with a wide throat opening also indicates severe overloading. Inspection tables which list the allowable throat opening dimensions are available from the major chain manufacturers. As with chain, nicks and gouges on hooks should be filed or ground out. The eye 
and the saddle areas of the hook should be checked periodically for wear. Sling master links are seldom worn to an excessive degree. There is, however, one particular condition that should be constantly checked, and that is the proper fit of the master link on a crane hook. Simply stated, the master link must be large enough to properly fit the crane hook. The master link should rest in the saddle of the crane hook. When setting up an implant chain inspection program, the rigger should be instructed to never overload a chain. The use of chain slings of ample size pays off in longer service life and proper safety margins. Proper attention must be given to the working angle of sling branches. Here we see how the working load limit table would rate the capacity of a sling made from 5 8 alloy chain. As the working angle is reduced from 90 to 15 degrees, the working load limit, or rated capacity, also decreases significantly. The fact is often overlooked that a single strand sling may be rigged like a double branch sling, resulting in sharp angles of loading. A condition such as this usually results in localized damage in the lower portion of the sling near the load. All too often, proper rigging where sling hooks are neatly seated in eye bolts or clevises with all portions of the chain in straight tension is not always possible. A more typical and frequent arrangement is illustrated here with a single branch sling equipped with a hook being used in a choke hitch. We see that above the crotch, the tension in the chain is eight tons. At first glance, one would think that everything is in proper order. But let's take a closer look at the setup. Only this time, below the hook. At this point, this looks like a double branch sling. Typical of the flat branch angles and tight choke hitches, the legs are at angles of only 15 degrees to the horizontal. At a 15 degree angle, the tension load in each leg of this 8-ton capacity sling is now 15 and a half tons, an overload of nearly 100%. From a safe rigging standpoint, it is most important that the riggers be aware of the load that will be imposed on a sling in a given situation. From an inspection standpoint, it should be noted that most damage is likely to occur in the lower section of the sling where it usually comes in contact with the load. Oddly enough, chain slings are damaged quite often when they are not in use. Chain slings should never be stored in damp, dirty places, nor in a place exposed to the weather. Chains should be oiled and hung in a clean, dry place if they are to be stored for long periods of time. Proper chain sling storage not only helps prolong the life of the sling, but also makes inspection and selection easier for the rigger. Before we conclude this program, it should be mentioned that OSHA requires a thorough periodic inspection of alloy steel chain slings on a regular basis. The frequency of these periodic inspections shall be determined by frequency of sling use, severity of service conditions, nature of lifts being made, and experience gained on the service life of slings used in similar circumstances. It is important to point out that such inspections shall in no event be at intervals greater than once every 12 months. We can sum up this program by saying that there is no shortcut method that will disclose chain and hook damage. Chain safety can only be achieved through proper inspection procedures. When discussing chain safety, we at CM strongly believe that no matter how good the product, Chain safety is ultimately up to those who maintain and use it.